Hey everybody, this is Claire, and this is Small Joyful Things. As always, I go to thrift stores, or I go to estate sales, or sometimes I buy things from Craigslist. I'm always looking for kind of interesting things that I want to find out more about. And then I bring them home, try to find out as much as I can, and then tell you guys about them. And I've got kind of a mystery today, but, well, I'm just going to show you, you guys can decide what you think. have a sugar bowl and creamer set and I really hope you can see them because they are just absolutely fabulous in their design like the, the handles are just the things that really get me it's just the the actual <laughs> the, the the swoop of it the the shape of it it's just and the iridescence and everything I just I'm I'm really digging like the the, the you know the look and feel of them um I got these for a $1.60, and that's Canadian. <laughs> I bid at an auction uh, in an estate sale. Um, I go on to Maxold, and basically if I see stuff, in the, like, I go looking through the auctions. And if I see something that I kind of like, then I will bid and see if I can get it for cheap. And I usually build a bid on like box lots. So this came in a lot of, um, I think, 10 items total. There were four sets of sugar of sugar and creamer. Uh, of, there were four sugar and creamer, sugar bowl and creamer sets. And then two random little little kind of decorative jokes. Um, I will be keeping uh, the sugar bowl and creamer sets and just get. Oh, I need to not do that. I swear to God, I'm dangerous to my own pieces. I'm sorry if any of you are wearing headphones. Please accept my apologies. I'm gonna try not to. See, this is the problem when you talk with your hands. And I don't just do this for the camera, I do this in real life. If I had someone tied my hands behind my back, I'd find it hard to speak. <sighs> anyway, so I sold a lot with these. I paid $16 for the whole lot. Um, I think I, I worked it out that based on everything, I spent about, I think one, yeah, so 10 pieces, so $1.60 per piece. So these together would be $3.20 $3. Um, altogether. Um, which I thought was a fantastic price. Now, the thing is, is that I bid on these because I saw the shape and I thought, that's Hooch and Reuther. That is vintage porcelain from the 1920s. I have to have it. Now, the pictures were blurry. <laughs> I just knew from looking, I saw the big swooping handles and I thought, this has got to be Hooch and Reuther. I, I've seen the pictures. Um, I'm, I'm sure it is based on nothing but that for the the sugar like the sugar bowl I wasn't sure about I saw the the, the little creamer I thought it had to be it was so distinctive like that is so art deco and the listing itself had kind of terrible information because they're kind of mentioned they mentioned like Cassily like this by the way just has favorite Bavaria and I think the whole thing we're listed actually is favorite Bavaria um but this one Actually, probably has a Hooch and Reuther, but if you didn't know what that mark is, you'd find it hard to read. And they only put Cassily down. They said it was Bavarian porcelain, basically. Um, didn't do such a good job of actually, you know, selling it, whatever. And again, I paid sixteen dollars for a whole lot of kind of really interesting vintage vintage porcelain, which I thought was really cool. But anyway, before we get to that, let's measure this up, and hopefully, I can do this without knocking anything over or banging them again. So this is about a little over six and a half inches. I get that so quite wide. So like six and six point six inches across. Then four and three quarters inches wide. And I'm gonna measure up to the highest point of the handle. About three and three quarter inches. And we'll leave that there and try not to knock it over. Yeah, this one. about five inches wide or five inches long I should say and a little short of three inches I'm gonna say two point two point eight maybe two point eight I don't know I'm not gonna get any kind of closer than that and then again about three point seven five there we go so, so what do we actually got now? The cool thing about the marks in this is that, like, they didn't actually show a picture of the marks in the in the entry in in the listing itself. They literally just showed like a couple of pictures of like all oh, the whole lot is on its own, and I just saw these two and thought this is going to be worth it. But what you can see here, 
first of all, JHR and it says Cassily. That's really great. That basically tells us like this is the pattern that's Cassily. And I've seen enough pictures to like that is essentially what I was looking at. Obviously, Hooter North or Cell Bavaria, and that here is favorite or favorite. I'm, I, I'll, I'll explain that in a minute. And the nice thing about this as well is that this is hand painted, hand painted, hand gilded, and the gilding has, you can see it's a bit worn, but it has survived pretty well. And the actual painting itself is basically this nice little kind of an impressionist kind of uh, design of roses. The same for this nice basically gold roses and I have to say that like the the gilding or whatever on on the sugar bowl has definitely survived very well like obviously with the creamer you'd be grabbing that a lot or whatever to obviously to pour or whatever it doesn't seem like this has taken that much of a beating there is a little bit of wear in a few spots but it's been it's held up very nicely usually if I see these you can see that like the entire rim has essentially been worn away it doesn't look very nice but no this one this one looks really good You can see as well that someone put a lot of effort into this. Like they see the, even the tiny little gold line that goes around the edge of the handle here. Like somebody worked at this. Somebody really did try. You can see again, favorite Bavaria. <laughs> now, these these basically would scream like Art Nouveau or Arts and Crafts to me, which is like the art movement essentially of the turn of the 20th century, where um, it was kind of this reaction against uh, the industrialization of of the Western world at that point, and the the industrialization of art and the arts and crafts movements was like they kind of started in the late eighteenth century, sorry, the late nineteenth century, and they just kind of they wanted to get back to kind of producing things by hand uh, we with with skill, and it came and it, it kind of evolved as far as I know around the turn of the twentieth century into into Art Nouveau. So when I saw these, I just thought, yes, that's Art Nouveau. That's beautiful. Now, the nice thing, and I gotta say, I really appreciate this, is that in this case, that little mark there says CM and 1915. In, and I know I've said before that those marks are not dates. In this case, I'm pretty sure it is a date. These two were painted in 1915. And CM, as far as I can tell, is the initials of the artist. Unfortunately, I have no idea who the artist is. Not for lack of trying. Can't identify it though. But we do have more information. I think I've talked long enough, so. <laughs> okay. Okay, so first of all, Hüchenreuther, the family. They're the, the, the family. And I've, and I've done a video before about a Hüchenreuther piece. I'll get to that as well in a minute. Obviously, they referred to the original porcelain business was founded in 1814 by Carlos Magnus Uchenreuther. And then his son eventually, like, essentially moved away, moved to Selb, where these were from, and started his own factory in 1857. Now, the cool thing about this is that obviously we've got the marks. Can we actually date the mark? And it turns out that we can. Is that and this doesn't look very good, I have to say. But that is the mark from 1857 to 1920. Now, Hüchenreuther was eventually was uh, was eventually bought by Rosenthal. I'm sorry, the other part of Rosenthal today. But you can see here again that same mark, Hüchenreuther Selb, 1870, 1857 to 1920, and that's consistent with what we know about 1915 being the mark, being the actual date. And you can see here, J.H. Orselb, uh, the Hüttenreuther of Selb, Bavaria. That just about matches that. You can see that the later ones have the extra stuff added in. They've got Artsburg, they've got the little lion. Oh, come on. But yeah, pretty sure that this is an old one. I think it's accurate to say that it is actually from 1915 later mark but like all oh, coming to the end of like the the use of this mark but yeah that's great for our purposes that basically kind of that, that i think is definitely a date mark that gives us an actual date 1915 these are a real antique but apart from that apart from the actual hutenreuther company itself what do we actually know about about the castle line um i took a look in a few different you know, took a look at a few different things and 
I can get this to load up. So this is JHR Cassidy Bavaria Sugar Creamer Hooch and Reuter Daisies. Now this is another piece that's actually hand painted. You can see that that is exactly as it should be. That is definitely the same design, again, hand painted, but that does not look like that. That, in fact, looks like this, which is the original Hooch and Reuter Sugar Bowl that I found a while ago, and I did a video about it then, saying that I managed to identify it. But you can see that is definitely that, even though it's unmarked. But it doesn't look like this. So where did this come from? What's the what's the connection here? And um, the weird thing is, is that the design of this, especially the handle, seems to more closely match this kind of swooping design here. It doesn't quite match this, even though every time I've seen the Castle, you know, the the, the Castle set from Hutchinoider, it always has these if it's the sugar bowl and the creamer. It's bizarre. And the problem is that I can't find any kind of a reference to or like any kind of like indication that uh, like of a piece like this. Now, obviously, be considering the marks, these were painted at the same time by the same person. And it looks like they're definitely made by the same company. But I cannot find anything about this anywhere being like part of the Castle line. It's really, really odd. And I've considered that maybe it's a different place setting, but I've looked up the Castle place setting and I can't find it there either. So it's a bit of a mystery. Like it clearly matches this. The design is perfect. They go together in a way that these don't quite, the design is not quite the same. It's like it's just a, this, this weird oddity. I don't quite understand why that's the case. Anyway, so this video is getting a little bit long, so I'm just going to continue. Anyway, now the, the cool thing that I wanted to know about is that, first of all, why has it got favourite on it? And is there anything else that can tell us about where this would have come from? And it turns out that it does. So if we go take a look at this. Favourite Bavaria 1916 Maker's Mark. Okay. And this is basically someone who has something called, that has the mark Favourite Bavaria, but we don't have any more information about it. And someone here who, is, who presumably has more information helpfully provides that Favourite Bavaria, sometimes marked blah blah blah, was a mark used by C. Hutchenreuther in Bavaria, Germany. It was used as a special export mark for the US market, with the American spelling of the word favourite, which is different to the traditional spelling of the British and British domiciles. The US-based importers of these wares were the Burley and Tyrell Company of Chicago, Illinois, and it's registered by the decorating studio by the name of Jacob Boo, 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 Boo. And then Illinois was taking whiteware with a favourite china backstab of decorating in the US. And you can see that that's also quite similar. It's, so it's possible, we don't really know, that these were maybe, maybe imported into the US. They arrived in Chicago, were painted by this company and then sold. I just, it's, it's really interesting. And the thing is that this also provides context for why this is unmarked. Now you can see that it's, it's glazed. So it's not like it would have been imported and then they just decided not to paint it. It's like that they would have been, they would have been bought unglazed and you then paint it and then glaze it and then fire it again. This one, for whatever reason, they decided not to. And I'm wondering, is this, I'm now wondering, is this like a salesman sample or something? Just to kind of give you a shape, like to give you an idea of what the shape could be and it just happens not to have any mark on it? Or is this like the 1920s version of white labeling? <laughs> um, white labeling obviously is that you, it's a, it's a thing in tech. Um, it's basically you make an application and then just put someone else's logo on it and they pretend kind of that they made it. I don't know, it's, it's, it's fascinating and I, and I really like it. Now, the other interesting thing I found out is that this is the, this is the founder of Hutchenreuther way back in the early the early 19th century, and his initials are CM. <laughs> so it kind of threw me for a minute where I was looking at, it says CM 1915, and he's a porcelain painter? Nah, no, it's not him. He died in 1845. Uh, it's, it's, it's weird, but you find sometimes looking at old porcelain. Anyway, I am remarkably pleased to have found this. Um, the sad thing, unfortunately, is that 
despite the fact that these are lovely antiques i'm pretty sure that they don't really sell for a whole lot i've seen a few online and the, the really nice ones like from the early 20th century are being put up for hundreds of dollars like I, i've seen one for 150 dollars um just this set that's kind of not as nicely painted as this um i have not seen many sales simply because i'm pretty sure people have looked at that and gone hell no i'm not paying that much for a sugar bowl and creamer set even a very nice antique set um I think I will probably be putting these up on Etsy. Um, I'll definitely be including this video. And what I will say is that, like, <laughs> I think it is worth maybe $60 and shipping on top of that. I don't think it's $150 some, what someone's going to pay for this. It's nice, but it's not that nice. <laughs> I just think they're, yeah, they're, they're pretty. They're interesting. And I'm so glad that I bought them for only $3.20. <laughs> so this is my small joyful thing for the day. Thank you very much for watching.